Ken, we learned yesterday that what was originally uh, billed as eight days in space uh, could end up turning into eight months in space uh, for Butch and Sonny. Uh, just kind of give me your reaction to uh, some of that news uh, coming out yesterday about Starliner. Yeah, it does sound like they will have to stay a little longer, but, you know, we don't know that yet. It's one of the options. The primary path for the uh, Starliner astronauts, Butch and Sonny, to come home is still the Boeing Starliner. Uh, but what needs to happen, as we learned yesterday, is more testing um, has to be done by NASA and, and Boeing, more testing and analysis to determine if the Starliner is truly safe to come home. Boeing stands by the Starliner. They issued a statement after the media briefing uh, yesterday saying they still believe Starliner is safe. Um, and that's kind of my my personal independent opinion and about it too. Um, but that's only because Boeing has done these additional tests of the helium leaks and the thruster uh, failures. So they did two hot fire tests separately of these uh, these reaction control system thrusters that are on the service module. They did one test about three weeks ago and another test uh, about a week ago with the service module uh, that's part of the Starliner docked to the International Space Station. And that all seemed to go well. Those were, you know, brief tests, brief pulses, and they seemed to go well. And um, then they also did uh, uh, testing of a thruster at White Sands to try and replicate uh, the issues that they're seeing in space with overheating and uh, limited fuel flow. And I think they have a root cause for that. But more work needs to be done and more analysis needs to be done. So that's why they're going to stay up longer. And I think that is, from my standpoint, the right decision that NASA and Boeing are making. The decision what was wrong in the first place, as I have told you and others, uh, I've been highly critical of NASA and Boeing uh, public relations. They should have had this mission not eight days from the beginning, but basically indefinite for at least a month or two, just like was done with the Crew Dragon first mission, okay, with uh, Doug and, and uh, with uh, Doug and Bob, and that that had an indeterminate return, and they wound up staying two months. So I all along thought that's what you know NASA and uh, Boeing should do from my own personal standpoint as a scientist and a journalist to collect more data on that Boeing crew capsule, and that's what they did with the Starliner. I mean, I'm sorry, that's what they did with the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon at that time four years ago now. Uh, we heard from uh, Ken Bowersox yesterday, and it sounded like there has been a little bit of a disagreement and maybe what this, uh, uh, in the discussions yeah. over what to do next. Can you kind of walk us through what this decision-making process might be like in determining the next step, whether these astronauts come home on Starliner or whether they uh, come home with uh, Crew-9? Yeah, those are basically the options is to come home on Starliner as the primary goal, primary uh, pathway. That's still the possibility. The other possibilities is they could send them home, one or two of them on Crew 8, four astronauts that are still up there, or they could send Crew 9, which is currently got four astronauts, but only launch with two of them. And then you would have Butch and Suni return on those two empty seats and that's how you get to February. So that's what's being discussed right now. There is an honest difference of opinion. I mean, as scientists, myself and engineers, we often have different opinions. Some people are more conservative, some people are less conservative. Human lives are at stake, you gotta remember. And this must succeed. There is no margin for failure. If the astronauts came home and they perished, that would be horrible. And that would be the end of the Starliner. So, um, it would have severe consequences. So what they do is they do these tests and Boeing put out a list of, of 10 or so different tests that they did about a week ago and they're continuing to do more testing. And so what the teams are doing now is analyzing that data. So they were gonna have a flight readiness review to determine when these two astronauts would come home, but that has been put off by the program control board. That's kind of like an intermediate step where, where they're at now. So people are looking at the data 
And before they go to the fl flight readiness review, the program control board reviews all the data. And then they'll make a recommendation. And then it'll proceed from there. So, you know, they had hoped to do this flight readiness review um, a week ago. And that's been put off while more data is analyzed, because there is this difference of opinion uh, as this kind of like normal. It's not cut and dry. Uh, in an emergency, I think the astronauts can still come home on the Boeing Starliner, but we don't want to bring them home until we're absolutely sure the Starliner is safe. That's the way it seems to be, but I support them, again, my personal opinion, staying up longer. And you know what? It's important, too, to say the astronauts are happy as clams to be up there. They always wanted to stay longer. That's what astronauts do. They want to stay up in space. They don't want to come home. You know, uh, during one of our previous interviews, I think you showed uh, Suni as she came through the hatch, and she was doing that dance, and she was extremely happy because they're finally there after years. you got to remember, these two people trained for years to stay um, to, 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 to go on this mission and stay at the space station. So they're extremely happy that they can stay longer. Now, there is a big difference between two months and eight months, <laughs> but I'm sure the two months they're very happy with. I have no doubt in my mind about that. Astronauts want to be there. And beyond that, they're experienced astronauts. They're not rookies. So they have been on the space station before. They know how to do science because they did it while they were there. They know how to operate the systems. They know how to maintain the systems. So it's extremely valuable for them to be up there. They are contributing as really full members of the space station crew. It's free labor. So uh, it's extremely good for them to be there. You know, there were also problems with the EVA spacesuits. Both of them have done EVAs. And so they're able to help the crew that's up there who had to have the scrubbed EVAs try to figure out what's wrong with this spacesuit. So in, from many standpoints, the science, the spacesuits, operations, maintenance, it's really valuable to have them up there. If these astronauts have to come home via SpaceX um, instead of Starliner, how embarrassing or damaging to a Boeing's future uh, plans would that be? Well, that I think would be embarrassing for Boeing. Um, that's why they want to do it, but they can only do it if it's safe and if it's, they have the data to prove that it's safe. Uh, and they claim they do. Um, I can tell you one impact already is um, the next Starliner mission is delayed, which I think is exactly the right thing to do. They were going to launch in February of next year, 2025, which is when the next crew 10 would go up and crew nine would come home. Uh, and there was a, a, a choice between doing crew the, the next crew on crew 10 with SpaceX or doing it with the Starliner. Um, mm -hmm. That was the plan actually to have Starliner one do it. Now that's been delayed at least six months because although it may be safe for them to come home, hopefully on the Starliner, what has to happen is Boeing must uh, revise their systems for the helium and the thrusters. They can't have this happen again, uh, where both these issues got worse on orbit after the launch. So that means at least a six-month delay is confirmed now, and SpaceX will do the flight in February instead of Boeing. And it could be delayed even more beyond that. So, um, so yeah, I guess that's a little embarrassing, but it has to be done. And uh, it's the right thing to do because they've got to make their systems, Boeing, reliable and robust. We don't want a repeat of this again with these issues. And they've had a lot of issues, Boeing. You know, it's many years late. It's launching four years late. That's already embarrassing. They have a bad, um, unfortunate reputation there out, out, in the, uh, out in the public. And that, um, that's had consequences. There's been all these stories People asking all the time, should, should NASA just go to one, um, one uh, spaceship to get the astronauts to space and the space station? The theory, or the strategy, I should say, NASA has had is two ways to space, okay? One with um, 
a Boeing Starliner and one with the Crew Dragon. That way, if one of them goes down, the other is still there. Dissimilar redundancy, it's called. So two systems are completely independent. And we know that this is important because look what happened uh, just last month, right? This is August. So in July, SpaceX had a rocket failure of their Falcon 9. That's what launches the Crew Dragon, all right? So until they fix that, which they believe they have found the root cause and they're working on the fixes and there'll be some intermediate fixes. But until that Falcon 9 upper stage is completely reliable, they can't even launch Crew 9, okay? So, <clears throat> so that's why you want to have the other system, which is the Boeing Starliner. Uh, the Russians have also had trouble with their uh, Soyuz. In fact, they had to bring um, uh, about two years ago an empty Soyuz back because it had a coolant leak and an American astronaut, Frank Rubio, he had to extend his stay from six months to a year. All right. So um, so that's why you need flexibility. Now, and they always know the astronauts, they could be asked to stay longer. So, you know, and they're usually very happy to do that. But that's part of the job. OK, you just can't come home because you don't like being there. If that's your feeling, you shouldn't be an astronaut in the first place. So you got to be flexible because the Soyuz, although it is extremely reliable, it had that issue. So they had to send up an empty Soyuz to bring those three crew members home um, roughly about a year ago now uh, with Frank Rubio. So he has the American space flight record, so which he never expected to have him have for a long duration of just about exactly one year in space, beating out Scott Kelly. So, you know, yeah, it's one thing to be embarrassed, but it's another thing to have totally reliable systems. As much as we can make them, they're all built by humans. So, um, yeah, that's where the situation stands.